Okay, so I'm going to um, give you a really quick writing lesson. Um, this is a method that I use with my own work all the time, um, and it's pretty simple. Um, so the first thing that you're going to need, you're going to need to have some writing equipment, right? Um, so your favorite pen and some kind of uh, thing to write on. Um, and you're going to have to have a piece of paper on the side. Um, and this is going to be a timed exercise, so you should plan to spend about 20 minutes, um, all told. Um, so the first thing that I'd like you to do is I'd like you to get everything ready to go. Um, and I'd like you to begin by um, drawing a tight spiral on some piece of paper. Um, this is a thing that I like to do to sort of start to relax and also let some part of me know, because um, I've been doing this a long time, that once I start to draw this spiral, I'm starting to get in the mood uh, to write some kind of story. And the thing I always tell my students is, uh, you, your job is to do, make, do a very slow, tight spiral, and you're trying to get the line as close to the other line, oops, without touching, and if you touch, if it touches, you get electrocuted. I don't know why, but as soon as I tell people they might get electrocuted, it makes them want to do it. Um, so uh, that's sort of the meditation part, and I'd like you to do that right now. And while you're doing that and keeping your hand in motion, I'd like you to put all your focus at the very tip top of your head. Almost like there's just a little light shining down on the very tip top of your head. And then move your focus to the center of your forehead and then your temples. And put your attention at the back of your skull. Move it to your jaw, the nape of your neck, your throat. Put your focus in your shoulders, your collarbone, sternum, shoulder blades, rib cage. Move your focus all the way down your spine to the base of your spine and hold it there. Put your focus on your hips, thighs, knees, shins, your calves, ankles, feet. Put all your attention on the soles of your feet and hold it there. Move back up to your shoulders, all the way down uh, your arms to your elbows, your forearms, um, your hands. I'm just going to recite this poem. Just draw your spiral. It's a poem by a 12th century poet named Rumi. Just draw your spiral and listen to the poem. You're sitting here with us, but you're also out walking in a field at dawn. You are yourself the animal we hunt when you come with us on the hunt. You're in your body like a plant is solid in the ground, yet you're wind. You're the diver's clothes lying empty on the beach. You're the fish. In the ocean are many bright strands and many dark strands like veins that are seen when a wing is lifted up. Your hidden self is blood in those, those veins that are like lute strings that play ocean music. Not the sad edge of surf, but the sound of no shore. Keep working on your spiral. I'd like you to think back to early days in your life, to just sort of picture an early scene. And then I'd like you to, um, I'm going to give you about 60 seconds to make this little list of images that come to you from a word I'm going to give you. And in this case, the word I'm going to give you is car. So I want you to think of um, any car in your life, kind of starting from when you were little, um, on a piece of paper, I'd like you to just make a list. You're going to have one minute to list every car, and it can be your grandma's car, it can be a train car, it can be a toy car, it can be the car you had, I don't know, your first car. Whatever comes to you, one minute. Go ahead. You're halfway there.
starting to wrap up. Concluding the line or phrase that you're working on and coming back together. All right, so now you have this list. Here's your little list of cars that you've written, um, this, or images that have come to you from this word car. I'd like you to look over this list, find one that seems kind of vivid to you or that you want to work with for a while, or if you just don't know which one to pick, pick number three. Um, all of them will have a story. And, but find one that you want to work with and circle it. And then on um, a clean sheet of paper, I'd like you to draw an X from a long line from one corner of the page to the other and write that title right there. I'm going to do the Clemenson's, Clemenson's Station Wagon. Okay, so this is something I call the X page, and this is a place where um, you're going to be taking some notes. I'm going to be asking you some questions about this image, and um, I want you to write the answers anywhere on this page. You can write in all four qu quadrants. You can go right through the X. Um, part of the reason to draw the X, um, one is for people who don't draw, that's the longest line you've drawn in like years. Um, but another thing is when we see an X, there's a part of us that sort of instinctively knows this, is, this isn't going to be, I mean, no story has a big X through the middle of it. This is going to be our, um, our note-taking place. So I'm going to ask you a bunch of questions. Like I said, write them anywhere. Um, so the first question that I have for you, is your, I want you to, what I want you to do is I want you to picture this scene with this car. If you picture it in your head. So the first question I have for you is, are you inside of the car or outside of the car? Go ahead and write that down somewhere. Inside of the car or outside of the car? If you are um, outside of the car, which part of the car are you facing? Are you facing the front of the car, the trunk, passenger side? Um, if you're inside of the car, what seat are you in? Um, Where's the uh, light coming from in this image, and what kind of light is it? Is it a garage light, street light, um, the sun? Um, what season does it seem to be in this image? And what time of day or night does it seem to be in this image? Whose car is it? Where are you in this image? Where is this scene taking place? What's the geographical location? What's the weather like? You know, you may just have to guess if you don't know. What's the air smell like? What are you doing? Is there anyone else in this image with you? If so, who? And if not, who, who might have been the last person that you saw? Roughly, how old are you in this image? Why are you there? What are some of the sounds that you can hear in this image? And if you look around you, 
What are some of the things you can see? What's directly in front of you? And if you're going to turn your head and look to your right in this image, what might be in that direction? And if you're going to turn your head and look to your left in this image, um, what might be in that direction? What's behind you? What's below and around your feet? And what's above your head? All right, good. So you're gonna have a fresh sheet of paper now and you're gonna write this story up. You've done all of the notes on it. Here's how I'd like you to do it. I'd like you to begin with the words, I am, and you're gonna be writing in the first person present tense like it's happening right now. So I am in the way back of the Clemenson station wagon and we're um, on our way to the carnival. Um, um, if you get stuck, if the story stops, just rests for a minute, instead of reading things over or like struggling about, you know, how you should do this, just write the words tick, 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 tick until the story starts up again. If you keep your hand in motion, the story will start up again. You're going to have seven minutes. Um, I'd like you to write for the entire time. I'll be right here. And um, I'll let you know um, kind of where you are with the time. I'll let you know when you have about three more minutes. So remember, beginning with the words I am, start by telling me where you are, writing in the first person present tense. If you get stuck, tick, tick, tick. And I will see you uh, when you get back.
You have about three more minutes. Add another minute. Starting to wrap up. Concluding the line or phrase that you're working on. And coming back to right now. All right. So the best thing to do at this point, if you um, have somebody around, it's really nice to read your piece out loud um, to someone or just to read it out loud um, to yourself. But there's something about reading it out loud um, that will allow you to go through the entire story and be able to hear it versus if you're just reading it and trying to figure out, did I just write a great story or didn't I? It's good to just uh, say this thing out loud. This way of writing will work for um, any word. I gave you cars, but um, the way that I like to find more stories is I like to look at a story that I've just written, or and I like to find the nouns in it. So maybe there's garden in there, or street, or garage, um, or alleyway, and I like to find those nouns, and then I, um, I put them on little index cards. And what I do is, when I sit down to write, I like to have these index cards with all these nouns, and I pull that card out and I use that as my um, writing prompt. I like to not know what it is that I'm about to write about because it gives the back of my mind a chance to um, step in. Um, so that's, the, that's how you write the end of the call.